big topic over the last few months has certainly been dicamba. How can we use it and what label changes are going to happen going into this season? All right, so I even have this sheet here just because it's hard for me to remember all the label changes, but here's what's happened since last year. These products that we're talking about, and, and it, this is not all dicambas, first of all. No changes for Banville, no changes for Clarity, okay? No changes for status or distinct or any of the other combos that we know of at this point. The only thing that's changed is Extendamax, Fexapan, and Ingenia, the products that are used in extend tolerant crops. Okay, so you've got restricted use. These products are all now restricted use. Record keeping is required. There's mandatory applicator training. You can't spray when the wind is blowing toward sensitive crop. You have to have at least a 110 foot downwind buffer. You can't spray between sunset and sunrise. That's probably the biggest change. And wind must be between three and 10 miles per hour. You have to clean your sprayer out very well. Obviously we should know that already. And then finally, there are certain states that have additional restrictions, including Arkansas, Minnesota, and North Dakota. All right, so one of the changes or, or one of the updates is that we want wind speed between three miles an hour and 10. And you may be thinking, wait a second, I don't want this product to move. Why do I even want the three mile an hour wind? Maybe I want less. Maybe I want to spray when it's calm. Well, the problem with spraying when it's calm is there may be an air inversion going on. And if there is a wind of at least three miles an hour, we know that we don't have an air inversion. So that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to get out there when there's just a very slight wind and then with the nozzles that we're using to get bigger droplets, with the, the drift control products that we're using, we know if it's just a wind that light, as long as we're staying to our buffer areas, we're gonna be okay. It's not gonna move to the next crop and, and that's what we're trying to avoid is those types of problems. Well, the big thing I think Darren's getting at here is you want to make sure the wind is blowing in some direction so you know where any potential drift is moving to. If it isn't moving at first, it could go anywhere right after that and all of a sudden the wind could pick up and go the wrong direction. In terms of the 10 miles an hour, yes, they used to talk about 15 miles per hour. They've slowed that down just a little bit to be on the safe side. The biggest thing I wanted to talk about though was the change in you can only spray during the daylight hours. And quite honestly, I don't think that's even right. Yes, it's on the label, but here's where I'm going with this. Okay, think about this for just a second logically. What's happening late into the evening? Let's say it's within an hour of sunset. Very commonly, we have dew starting to form in the leaves. Humidity levels go up. Okay, what I'm getting at here is, with the great big droplets we're now spraying with dicamba, there's not enough time in order for that great big droplet to get absorbed into the leaf. And in order to not have to worry about volatility, we need absorption into that leaf or we need rain one or the other. Okay, so if it's not gonna rain, we want absorption into that leaf. Well, what could potentially happen is if you spray too late, and last year we saw a lot of this where people were spraying into the overnight hours, well, the next morning the wind shifts and there's a little bit of volatility of that product, all of a sudden it's moving the other direction. Now, I realize the companies are gonna say, hey, there's no volatility, and maybe they're right, I don't know, but all I know is, the later we were spraying, the greater chance we had for that wind to shift and for the product to move off target. One thing that's on the label is you could spray these products up until R1. So you can spray it up until those beans are blooming. And really here's where we differ just a little bit. We wanna be a little bit more conservative to try to avoid problems. So what our recommendation is, we wanna finish before the beans start flowering. The reason why, when we saw any kind of movement off target into non-extend soybeans, for example, we saw yield loss uh, more commonly when we had beans that were already flowering. If the beans weren't flowering yet, a lot of times if there was a drift and it wasn't major, we really didn't see much yield loss from that. Now, there are certainly cases that may be different, but just to be on the safe side, if we finish spraying earlier, we can avoid a lot of those problems. By the way, most of what we did see last year in terms of leaf cupping from dicamba, most resulted in no yield loss, or it actually resulted in yield gain, believe it or not. So anyway, nevertheless, even if there is yield gain, we don't wanna go around cupping anybody else's soybeans. So what we suggest, in addition to what Darren said, finish your spraying of dicamba prior to soybean flowering, in addition to that, our suggestion is, look, yes, follow the label, obviously. But on top of that, 
if you're in a sensitive area, let's say you've got sensitive crop within one mile of you, our suggestion is to finish your spraying four hours before sunset. That way you should have the opportunity or your, your herbicide should have the opportunity to get fully absorbed prior to that dew coming on into the evening. And then the other thing is spray only when that wind is gonna be out of the same direction for two days. So in other words, it's blowing out of the, whatever, out of the north today, make sure it's blowing out of the north tomorrow also. So for two days in a row, it's blowing away from the neighbor. That way you've got a far better chance of avoiding any issues. One last thing that you have to be aware of is now there's required training if you're going to apply dicamba. Uh, you can check with your state. You can also find more training online, uh, but make sure that you are licensed and trained to be able to apply these products correctly. Well, dicamba is a great product for controlling Roundup resistant weeds. It is not a great product for stopping our weed of the week. We'll tell you what will control this tough weed later in the show.